And Faith Time, of course, is our weekly conversation on matters of faith. Joining us this morning is Pastor Sam Sinclair with Cloverleaf Baptist Church in Mobile. Pentecost is underway for a lot of churches. So the first question is, what is Pentecost? Pentecost was one of the Jewish festivals in the Old Testament. It came 50 days after Passover, and it was a celebration of the gathering in of the first fruit to harvest. Now, fast forward to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. That's the day where God sends the Holy Spirit to permanently indwell and empower his people. God's inaugurating a new covenant there. Uh, and actually, before his ascension, Jesus had promised to send the Holy Spirit to empower his people to preach the gospel. So let's talk about the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit, and how does the Holy Spirit differ from the Father's Son in the Christian Trinity? Well, great question there, Chad. I think a question a lot of people get confused about exactly what the Trinity is. What we don't mean by the Trinity, we do not mean that there are three distinct gods. We believe that there is one God. We see that revealed throughout Scripture. But the, the one God exists eternally in three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all three persons are truly God. All three persons possess the attributes of God, and all three persons work together in perfect harmony. So throughout Scripture, a pattern that we see, we see God the Father planning, God the Son carrying out the Father's plan, and then God the Holy Spirit applying uh, the, really God's work and giving life. And really, I think the best example I could possibly give is in redemption, in salvation, which of course is the heart of the Christian message. God the Father planned our salvation from before time. And then God the Son, Jesus Christ, dies on the cross for sinners, paying the price that our sin requires. And then God the Holy Spirit goes about applying that when the gospel is preached. He convicts us of our sin, shows us that we need a Savior. He gives us new life. He gives us the gifts of repentance and faith so that we can receive Christ and receive God's forgiveness in the work of the new birth. So I think that's a really good illustration, just a little snapshot of how the triune God works in redemption. And of course, he works in so many other ways. We could talk about creation and God remaking the world at the end of time, but uh, redemption being the best illustration I can think of. What do you think the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood part of the Trinity? There's a couple of reasons, I think. Um, I think some people get the idea that the Holy Spirit is somehow less divine than the Father and the Son. Uh, we see him being sent by the Father and the Son together, so it's easy to think that, well, he's sort of less than God because he's uh, carrying out the Father and the Son's will. Uh, some people assume that because there's a difference in operation, there's a difference in importance. But in the Bible, we see that the Holy Spirit is presented as fully and truly God alongside the Father and the Son. Uh, another reason I think the, the Holy Spirit is often so misunderstood is that many people equate him to just a force, to one of his attributes, power, right? So Acts 1.8, we see Jesus saying, you receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so a lot of people refer to the Holy Spirit uh, as an it, as a, as a force rather than uh, a person. He's not some impersonal force, uh, but he is the personal God. And so in Ephesians 4.30, for example, we learn that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. We see in the Gospels that he can be blasphemed. He can be worshipped. We see him praying for God's people in Romans 8. We see him acting. We see him convicting us of sin. We see him giving life. We see him drawing. And that's Pastor Sam Sinclair with Cloverleaf Baptist Church. We thank him for joining us for this edition of Faith Time and News 5 this morning. We'll continue after the break.